Many people in the community, including me, have genuinely felt that AMD might not be competent in their marketing. First off, the 7900 XT launched at $900 and it was way overpriced. The RX 7600 non-XT at the last minute, AMD made a price cut that dramatically changed reviews for the product, all because it seems like they didn't know how to read the room correctly. Now they go ahead and announce the RX 7800 XT and its MSRP is $150 less than the 6800 XT and it might be 17% faster than it as well. Wait, that's pretty good. Then they also announced a 7700 XT at $450 that could definitely put pressure on Nvidia Finally, did AMD just nail this or is this all just a debate? Kind of like if you're anything like this, Microsoft is coming to get you and wants to charge $200 for Windows 11. That's why our only hope is SCD key. With them, you can get Windows 10 Pro for a low price and upgrade it for free to Windows 11. Once you get to check out, make sure to use code VEX for an extra 25% off of this already great deal and just choose your preferred payment method and you will be emailed your code. Working with SCD keys, all of their codes have come from OEM manufacturers and they're completely safe, so no need to worry about that. Again, huge thanks to today's sponsor. Make sure to use code VEX and let's get back into it. Let's talk about the $500 7800 XT first, and I'm skipping over the 7700 XT with good reason. AMD did show some performance benchmarks, so obviously take this with a grain of salt. And I did just realize that when I went to go grab the screenshot, this is actually from Gamers Nexus's video. They have watermarked benchmarks, and these were actually slightly different from the official benchmarks. Based off of what AMD showed in these games, the RX 7800 XT is 17% faster than the 20% more expensive RTX 4070. And how I calculated this is not including ray tracing, so just rasterization performance. But I have to point out, even in ray tracing titles, I think the 7800 XT is quite competitive versus the 4070, which is kind of surprising. And you know, allegedly, theoretically, technically, judging based off of the RTX 4070 and hardware on boxes data here, 17% faster would put the 7800 XT at about the same rasterization performance as a 6950 XT. The lowest in price we've ever seen 6950 XTs go is about $600. So the 7800 XT, if it is that performance, will be $100 less than that, that card's you know, lowest price. Also, that performance is within striking distance of an RTX 4070 Ti, which goes for $800. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> I don't know if that says more about how the 7800 XT will be good or if it says more about Nvidia's pricing at this moment. Just solely based on this raw value, this makes the 7800 XT a good value at $500. Also, I mean, this is allegedly, obviously I'm going off of AMD's numbers right now. We'll see when actual reviews come out. With this card, AMD will shake up the market. And actually that fear that was building that the 7800 XT might not be faster than the 6800 XT because it has 12 less compute units. Well, that doesn't seem like it actually matters because according to what we see so far, it is faster than the 6800 XT and they're going for about the same price. So the 7800 XT is a clear choice. But I wanna go a little deeper into this whole compute unit thing, because technically speaking, the 7800 XT is 10% slower than the 7900 XT, and that's not a big deal, but it has almost 30% less compute units. How does that difference make up? And I think all of us have been very confused why AMD has been taking so long to launch these 7000 series of graphics cards, and especially in this mid-range where Nvidia's kind of just been unchecked. So yeah, there probably is an oversupply of 6000 series cards and they're slowly making through selling them out, but have we can also consider the possibility that AMD has also been working on RDNA 3 behind the scenes and improving it. And that'd be why these compute units on the 7800 XT 
works so much more efficiently than on the 7900 XT. Have they been listening to the market? Is that why they're providing us a 7800 XT? That seems like it's going to be good value, but we can't really say for sure. Which I guess leads me into the $450 RX 7700 XT. AMD did not make a reference model cooler for the 7700 XT, and that was intentional. According to AMD's own numbers, the 7700 XT against the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte, I gotta just straight up say like 17% faster than a 4060 Ti isn't exactly all that exciting. <laughs> and that puts the alleged performance of the 7700 XT at about the level of the past generation RX 6800 non-XT 16 gigabyte graphics card, which actually goes for about $450, technically the same price as the 7700 XT. And compared to the past generation 6700 XT, the 7700 XT costs 33% more at this current moment, and it's only 26% faster. Therein lies the problem. The 7700 XT is really cut down compared to the 7800 XT, and there's only a $50 gap between the two GPUs. Okay, let's look at this. So you might not think that just 60 compute units on the 7800 XT versus 54 on the 7700 XT, so you wouldn't think that's that big of a deal, but where the differences really come in these GPUs is the 7700 XT has four gigabytes less VRAM, which again, it's like, well, 12 is probably enough. But what that leads to is a cut down memory interface at 192 bits compared to 256 bits, which leads to slower VRAM. And this will impact your performance way more dramatically, especially as you go up in resolution. And the 7700 XT is still targeted as a 1440p graphics card. But let's see this in a more practical sense, okay? So with my very, very scientific deductive reasoning, I was able to find that the 7800 XT might be about 30, 32% faster, and it only costs 11% more money. So obviously like the 7800 XT is a better deal, has more VRAM and I wrote this kind of backwards, but you get my point. If it does go down like this when reviews go live, we might be seeing with the 7700 XT like the same situation that happened recently with the 7900 XT. 7700 XT would be significantly cut down just like the 7900 XT was compared to the 7900 XTX, but the price difference between the two isn't big enough to, you know, justify buying the lower end one. You would just always get upsold to the higher end one. It's so weird how AMD simultaneously seems like they know exactly what they're doing. They're releasing a competitive product with the 7800 XT right now, and then they make it seem like they don't know what they're doing when they doesn't seem like they learned from the 7900 XT a whole lot with how bad that launch went. And this is most likely why there is no reference model of the 7700 XT. It's because reference models of GPUs typically aren't made at huge volumes, and that means that they sell out relatively quickly compared to the other board partner models. AMD is fully aware that the 7700 XT is not going to be very competitive at its launch MSRP. So even if we just want to like sit here and claim incompetence on AMD's part, I think AMD knows exactly what they're doing in this situation. And I would expect the 7700 XT's price to drop significantly or drastically within just a few months of launch, just like how the 7900 XT did. And if the 7700 XT is just meant to be an upsell to get you to buy the more expensive 7800 XT because it is better value, well, AMD, like, that's okay, but you really don't have the market presence or the mind share of the consumers to try to con us into buying an upsold GPU. Even Nvidia has been having problems doing this with their cards. We saw the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte, which was a 
upsell compared to the 8 gigabyte version of that card and the 16 gigabyte one ain't doing so hot, okay? If AMD really wants to make progress in this market, they need to be putting out more competitive products like how it seems like the 7800 XT is going to be so that they can gain you know market share and trust in the community but when amd still makes blunders like how the 7700 xt looks like it's going to go it's kind of frustrating i guess there is another approach how they could try to gain market share and trust in the community and that would actually be to start innovating within the software realm like how nvidia does it usually nvidia is first to make like dlss or frame generation it usually seems to be behind on those things and at gamescom amd did announce that they're actually going to get a major feature before nvidia does wouldn't you like fluid motion frames in thousands of games how about every DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 game you play, we can double and triple your frame rate. Wouldn't you like that? <laughs> Running the AMD Adrenaline HyperRX software is going to get the benefits of fluid motion frames, frame interpolation and generation. Awesome. AMD fluid motion frames. And this could be a really cool feature that allows you to do frame generation at the driver level so you could do frame generation in maybe any game but this is a really crazy topic that i would love to save for a different video and go way more in depth on especially when maybe we could get some hands-on testing or something like that. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the 7800 xt and the 7700 xt am i right am i wrong or am i theory crafting way too much right now because it'd be going crazy out here obviously everything is subject to change when reviews actually come out but the even first party performance that they were showing for the 7700 xt isn't all that convincing so it might end up worse in reviews when it comes down to it other than that y'all have a great rest of your day or whatever you're doing and i'll see you in the next one peace also did did anybody else notice in the bottom right corner Yes, 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 yes.